Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at some sketching basics and fundamentals in Fusion 360. So let's just jump right into it. So I'll start off with some example projects. So this is a really fun one. This is the MIDI Melody Maker. Check this one out. I got a link in the description. And it's a really fun one that is very heavily based on making sketches that are kind of based in the center of your grid. You're going to do a lot of that today. Making sketches that are centered to your grid and understanding when to use the grid and all that stuff. There's another one. This is my latest one. It's a tombstone using the Halloween M4. And same thing. It's using a lot of sketches that are centered. That way I can have these. Um, it's real easy to make mirrors and things when things are centered in the grid of your of your components. So let's make a new tab and I'm going to kind of jump into making some sketches. So the first thing I'll do, make a component, hit OK. And now I'll make a new sketch. So I have a blank canvas, but normally what I what, what I used to do is I would design with the layout grid turned on. So under um, under this little icon, the grid and settings, you can turn your grid on and off. I tend to have it off now because for a design like this, you can see that I'm actually um, going down below the, the kind of floor plane. And um, that's a little jarring sometimes. So that's why I normally keep it off because when you create a sketch, you're going to see your grid anyway. Another thing that I've been uh, focusing on, uh, on on projects is to design with like the orientation in mind. So an example would be like if I hit the home key, it's very uh, my my model is is very much one to one with uh, my view cube. So if you look at the view cube, you got your top. That's my top. Um, I, this is my come on fusion. This is my uh, front, and this is my back. This is my left and that's my right. So that just makes sense to me. Um, but if you look at the, the MIDI uh, Melody Maker, you'll see that it's not like that's the front. This is the front because I, I am modeling it as if it were on a, on a table, which is what I feel like the floor plane is, like a sort of a work surface. So I could have designed this where this is flat and like this is the floor, but that doesn't make sense because like I can rotate around this way and that's how it's going to be in, in real space. So. That's one thing that I tend to do. Like when you're modeling something, try to keep your view cube in the same orientation as you'd like your model to be, or your assembly. In this case, there's a bunch of pieces that make the assembly. So I got my grid here. Cool. I'm going to create a sketch and draw on this plane here because it says as if I want to draw on a wall, right? So I'm looking at the front, and now I got this. So there's a dot in the center of your grid. It is called a sketch point. And it is like the center sketch point. If you look here at the bottom, in, uh, it gives you some details. It is in the dead zero of your universe here, of your world, of your work coordinates. It's in the center of everything. So I tend to use this for everything. This little guy that's hidden until you click on it is the most important thing ever. <laughs> so I'm going to use a two-point rectangle by hitting the uh, the command key R on my keyboard, just clicking on this little rectangle. And of course, you have three different options you can choose from, but I tend to use the two-point rectangle uh, the most of the time. So I'll just kind of click. And as I drag, you can see I got my dimensions here. And if I don't tab, if I don't hit the tab key or hit the enter key and just click on that last second point, I just get this rectangle, right? There are some things here that is, is worth noting that are get added by default. The main one is this little guy here. What is that? That is a horizontal vertical constraint. And you can access those by uh, these guys up here in your sketch toolbox, right up there. Um, so what that does is it keeps your line horizontally constrained or vertically constrained, depending on kind of where it is. So we can remove those by just deleting. And we can, we can do that for every edge here because they get added to each edge. So now that, now that they're gone, we can still kind of move these lines. And they kind of have the same um behavior right they're still maintaining uh they're still vertical and, and horizontal but if you grab the point now you're able to create angles so you can create these angles like that and because we don't have those constraints anymore uh, they're free to move around another thing that you might not know is that if you click on a point this little guy comes up this is a coincident <laughs> This is a coincident constraint. It basically uh, ties two points together. So if we delete that, we now have two points that we can move around. So now that's that's all this line has, or this is shape. We've, we've, we've pulled apart all of the constraints, and now it's free form to float around. 
And if you want to connect these, there's two ways to do it. You can hold down the shift key, select both of those dots, and then hit the coincident. Or you can just drag one of these and drop it onto any one of these lines or, or points, and they will connect. So let's drop that there. And now that is a, a connected point here. And if we want to straighten this out, um, if we want to go this straight across, then we can apply that horizontal or vertical constraint. And there's that. You can see everything else is kind of going with it. And since my since that is still active, I can just go here and click on these lines and straighten them out. Super easy. Now we're back to where it kind of started with this, with our original rectangle. So now we got a good understanding of the rules that are applied to a, a, a two-point rectangle. We can start to um, make it in the center of our sketch point. So what I tend to do, uh, we can do it in two different ways. So I'll show you the first way. So let's say I want to make this line centered with this dot, right? Our center sketch point. If we hold down Shift, you can select both of them, and then all you really need to do is to click on one of these midpoint constraints. So this will make it so that this line gets in the center of our sketch point here. So let's try it. Click on that and the whole thing moves. Yeah, that's what we want. So if I start moving the left and the right edges, you can see here that um, this line here is, is, is kind of changing and it's maintaining a, a center with this dot, which is what we want. And then if you bring the top, uh, you can see that's, that's, that's moving there. So now we can apply some, uh, some fixed dimensions here, let's say 25 and like 20. And you can see that uh, that's looking okay. And it's locked in there now, sweet. So what's cool is we can add some stuff. Let's say I want to add like a tab here, a tab. Uh, we can use our two-point rectangle again. Let's just make this. And then let's say I want this to be in the center of this thing. So if I double click on a line, it'll select the whole thing. And that way I can move it around. So basically what I want to do is I want to make this in the center of this line. So how do I do that? How do I attach these two lines together, but also maintain a midpoint constraint? you just need to add a midpoint constraint, really. So those two are selected. I use the Shift key to select both of them. And I can hit midpoint, and then that gets uh, glued to it via a midpoint. So as I stretch this out, you can see that um, I can get this little tab here um, that will always stay in the center of our line there. So now I can apply a fixed dimension. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. I hit the X key. Uh, I can use the D key to make a dimension. Let's say that's eight. And then this length here could be like two or something. And that's cool. So now as I change the width of this rectangle, it's gonna, it's gonna push or pull that, uh, that tab there. So it's gonna lock, it's always locked to it no matter what I change it. And that's kind of the fundamentals of making a parametric design is to use those uh, type of um, constraints. And then if I make this taller, you can see here that, yeah, the, the thing is moving with it. But let's say you want a dynamic tab where the length of it is always changing. Well, instead of, let me undo that, instead of having a fixed length, let's delete that length. And then we can say, well, I always want a certain amount of distance away from these two edges here. So you can see here the distance between them right now is 21. If I click on that, I actually can't. Oh, yeah, I can. Uh, I'll, I'll say um, five. And then the length changes. But it also changes on the bottom here. So now this and this are also five millimeters because it's a midpoint constraint. It's really cool. So if we delete that midpoint constraint, now this tab um, can move freely, or the bottom of this tab can move wherever it wants. Now what I'm thinking, let's make another line. If I, if I want to make a line that is in the center going across these two lines, I kind of have some help here from Fusion. It's telling me like, hey, there's some dotted lines here. That's your center point. Also, if I roll over any one of these lines, I'll get a midpoint constraint icon. Let me know that that is indeed the middle. And that works on any line. So if I go over here, you can see there's a midpoint there. Over there, there's the midpoint there. You just roll over it, and you get your idea there. So again, I'll go into this edge, find my midpoint, and then click. And then on the opposite end, midpoint again, click. And right now, by default, this separates our, our rectangle to two of them. So a way to avoid that is to select your line and then hit the X key on your keyboard or this icon over here in the sketch palette called construction. And that'll make it a dashed line so that it won't uh, intersect with our profile. So that's cool. So now what I want to do is I want to put a dimension that says I want five millimeters away from the center of this line. So now that's five. 
And then this right here now, as you can see, I can push this out because there's no constraint yet to it. So instead of using a midpoint constraint, because I don't want it in the middle now, uh, I can use a collinear constraint. This basically ties two lines together. So I will select this one and this one, holding in the shift key, and then just collinear, and then that snaps it there for me. So that's awesome. So let's hit finish sketch and start doing some extrudes. So let's say I want this to be three millimeters thick. I'll select the tab and extrude that separately, three millimeters, and I'll make it a join operation. Why not? Okay. And now what I can do is I can mirror this tab to the other side very easily because I have drawn this sketch in the center of our sketch point. So I'll uh, bring up my design shortcuts, type in mirror, select it, and then uh, the pattern type, let's set it to features, and the object will be this, this single extrude here that we did in our timeline, and then our mirror plane, select that. As soon as we hit the select icon, uh, we get our, our grid, or uh, rather our, our, our planes, our default plane origins that we can use uh, to mirror a copy. So if I want to mirror a copy down there, you can see it mirrors that. That's not the one I want. I want this one right here going to the left and to the right. So you can see here, there's my second tab there on the left side. Cool. So what if I wanted to make another set of tabs and mirror it with this line? I think you can do that now. Let's try it. So I'll mirror, and then I'll select, yes, you can mirror a mirror, but I need to select that first extrude first, or rather that second extrude, and then the mirror. And then our mirror plane, I think. No, it can't be that. It can't be our line there. So what we need to do is go back into our sketch. So double click on it. And then you see at the bottom there, we have our midpoint constraint. We no longer want that midpoint constraint. So we'll just delete that like that. And now this whole set can move. I can double click on one of these edges and it'll select kind of the whole thing. And if I move that around, you can see it moves everything around. And I kind of want now this construction line to be in the center of this sketch point. So select both of them again with the shift key and then you just apply that midpoint constraint. And now the whole set, the whole rectangle set, square, whatever, um, gets uh, centered uh, on this axis here, on the red line, which is I think our X axis, yep. So now when I hit finish sketch, I can do the, uh, the design shortcuts, pull up a mirror, and now I can say I want to mirror that first tab and then the mirror tab. And then the mirror plane will be our sort of our floor plane here, this guy. And because we sketched it right in the middle of our x-axis, we have a perfect mirror. So hit OK, and there's our tab. Now, instead of going into uh, the sketch every time, once I do that, you can see that my extrudes and things are grayed out because it's essentially saying, like, I'm in the time before all that stuff was made. So what if you want to modify these while you're in ahead of time? Well, you can do one of two things. You can, well, one thing. <laughs> Drop your components open, open your uh, your sketches window uh, folder, and then right click on your sketch and say show dimensions. And that'll let you to, that'll allow you to modify the, 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 the length of a dimension. It won't let you delete one, but it, I think you can delete one. Yeah, you can delete one, but uh, I don't think you can add any new ones until unless you go back into the sketch. But this is a great way to kind of demo this uh, these these features. So instead of 50, I put 100, and you see that my um, my tabs are growing with it. And let's say I want to make this bigger, like 10, and up here too, 10. You can see it's dynamically changing. If I make this five, it grows out even longer. So that's great. And then if I go uh, longer on the on the Z on the x-axis, sorry, uh, let's make this 100, and it's ex it just expands with it. That's really the basics and the fundamentals of making a parametric design, where you want it to kind of stretch and grow, and um, and just uh, adapt with uh, with the least changes to the to the values. So that's cool. But what if we want to do a circle? So let me go back in here and add some mounting holes. Right. A lot of times you'll see folks um, make a circle, and let's say they'll like uh, accidentally or or maybe unintentionally just like do this, right? And then they'll try to move their circle. They'll be like, "Why can't I move the circle?" Like I can move it, but it's locked. What's going on here? Well, if you click on the center of your circle, there's a coincident because we placed it on the line. So if we delete that, now we can move the center of our circle around. And some other times I see folks do this where they drop in their um, their circle in the center and then they can't move it. And they're like, why can't I move it? Like, I can stretch this out because I don't have a dimension to that. And if I apply one, I still can't move it. Like what's going on? And you try the move tool, people try to move tool. Why won't it move? Because there's a there's a constraint locked to it. You, it. 
you drew the thing in the center, so it's gonna stay locked there. So if I roll over that, you can see here, there's my coincident, delete that, and now I can move my circle. So what if I want my circle to be uh, a certain distance away from these two edges? Well, we can apply a sketch dimension to it. We'll say the center of my circle should always be, let's say, uh, five millimeters away from there. And then I'll do another one, the center of the circle from the edge of this, of this line, and that can also be um, five. And then I'll go ahead and change the mil uh, to like an M3 screw size. And now I have my little hole here. Very cool. So now I can do is I hit OK. Let's say I want four of them. We can pretty much do the same thing. I will extrude this out, three millimeters, to make that hole cut out. And then I can use the mirror command to mirror that one hole uh, two times, right? So I can mirror it on the, on the X and the Y, going up and down. There's my hole, and then I can do another mirror, just like we did our tab, and then select that extrude and that mirror, and then we'll just use the opposite, um, the side by side, um, you know, the left and right midpoint, or the left and right kind of plane. So there is our circle. So now as I update this, maybe we want to do M25, it gets smaller. Maybe I want to push this further out or further inward. We just update these things, and all four of them are updating. So that's that's a really good I think demo that um, that covers the centering your your sketches via constraints and then uh, kind of building around and using uh, collinear collinear and coincidence and midpoint constraints. Those three are kind of like the main three constraints that I use every single day, all the time, forever. <laughs> I hope you guys learned something. Uh, if you have any cool topics that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. I got a playlist as well, so you can check out some other previous videos. But until next time, remember to stay safe out there and don't forget to, well, make a great day. I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye.